Welcome to Finger Licking Farm, the largest free-range chicken conglomerate this side of the Gem Sea. At Finger Licking Farms, we care about our chickens, and we treat them just like members of our very own family. Here at our seaside branch, we treat our chickens with dignity and respect, so you can rest assured that your breakfast came courtesy of one happy and healthy chicken. Take little Joshua here, for example. Just look at the luster on that coat. You can tell Joshua must be living a truly excellent life here on Finger Lickin' Farm. But let's take a step back. Finger Lickin' Farms wasn't always a conglomerate. In fact, it all started here on this very beach, not so long ago, with our founder, the Colonel. Shortly after the untimely death of the Colonel's grandfather, our founder moved into the small rural village of Pelican Town, determined to write his name in the stars. Thanks to a small life insurance policy he had taken out on his grandfather just months prior, the Colonel was able to quickly build his very first coop. All it took was a little grit, some rocks, and a healthy donation to the local carpenter to ensure that Finger Lickin' Farm could begin. Within days, the first of many coops was built and the very first chick named Danny after an early investor was acquired from a local business owner. Finger Lickin' Farms has always believed that giving back to your community is the fastest way to win the hearts and minds of our future customers. After all, wouldn't anyone rather buy their produce from a company well known for investing in its hometown? Over the next several days, the Colonel cleared space on the land his grandfather had recently updated his will to deed to him. He knew that one single chicken wouldn't build an empire, and within another week he had purchased his second chicken, Figglesworth. Now, I can't possibly give you the names of every single chicken that the Colonel purchased during these early years on the farm, but you can find a full list in the description of this video. And if you're interested in joining the flock, you can even become a channel member or Patreon supporter yourself by following the links below. With Danny and Bigglesworth quickly growing to laying age, the Colonel knew that it was time to look beyond merely eggs. After purchasing two more chickens, F.T. Wilwyn and a 20-something loser, the Colonel decided to begin planting some wheat. He knew that the idyllic country life required more than eggs for nourishment, but since the Colonel had only a primary school education, he was unable to handle the delicate math that such an enterprise required. With his very first setback, the Colonel decided perhaps to wait for any further farming decisions. He was a rancher first, after all. These days, we have teams of local farmers who grow and ship our wheat and hay, along with a flock of talented accountants, analysts, and actuaries, leaving more time for our ranchers to do what they do best. Regardless, it wasn't long before the Colonel had saved enough money to expand the ranch, building a second coop and adding four more chickens to the farm. Farm DACR, Jessica Aaron A., Wickedy and Rowboat Cop were the next four chickens, and it was here that the Colonel's ambitions began to take shape. He quickly found himself running out of supplies for the delicate machinery he used to produce his mayonnaise. That meant trips to the local mines to acquire more materials, as well as many trips to the local carpenter to establish a productive and lasting relationship. By the end of his first summer on Finger Lickin' Farm, the Colonel had built and filled two more coops with chickens. But there was more than mere profit on our founder's mind. The Colonel was, of course, a philanthropic individual as well. In that same summer, he decided to spend time giving back to the community by donating some of the forage he gathered on his many peaceful walks around the valley. The local community center was a drop-off point for underserved members of the community, and the Colonel made sure to give back even when no one could possibly recognize his good deeds. And at a regional festival that marked the end of summer, the Colonel came to a realization. Life was fleeting and the beauty of these natural events reminded him that he too would one day drift away into the void, just as the jellies did each year. A kindred spirit at the festival caught his eye, and the Colonel's life changed forever. Over the next several weeks, the Colonel was distracted. His work on the farm continued, and he retooled the layout of his many chicken coops to improve productivity, but he also went out of his way to visit his new friend and confidant. The Colonel's first husband was a troubled man, his love for chickens was matched only by his disdain for his fellow man, and try as he might, the Colonel couldn't convince Shane to join him on the farm. Nevertheless, the Colonel continued to make overtures to this like-minded individual, all while expanding his own operation and giving back to the town in the form of cash investments. You see, Pelican Town had an administrative problem. The mayor at that time had bled the town dry on several vanity projects and subsidies for local businesses. In recent years, his corruption was identified, and the man is currently serving time in a minimum security prison, but that's neither here nor there. The important thing to know is that the core precept of philanthropy is a driving force for Finger Lickin' Farms, and was established as early as this. One smaller item of note is that this is about the time that the Colonel began to experiment with genetic modifications. Our sister company, Fungus Farms, got its start on this very farm as well. 
Midway through fall, the Colonel was able to finally put Finger Lickin' Farm on the map by competing in a regional harvest festival competition. The Grange display, as it was called, was an opportunity for the Colonel to showcase nine of his most valuable products from Finger Lickin' Farm. Looking back, we, of course, know that the Colonel handily bested the competition. But you have to wonder, just what was going through his mind at the time? Was he confident in that moment? Assured of his victory? Or did he have private doubts? Perhaps when his memoir releases next year, we'll know. But for now, it's a true mystery. With Finger Lickin' Farm now truly in the spotlight, production began to ramp up in a massive way. And with that spotlight so firmly shining on the Colonel himself, he made the final donations to erase what was left of Pelican Town's debts, ushering in a new era for the community, and allowing them to pay against the lien on their local bus. Some local cosplayers even held a ceremony to bless the bus, and bless their hearts, they did such a wonderful job. As production on the farm sped up, the Colonel found himself running out of space for the many machines he needed to meet the heavier demands of the community. He purchased the deed to a small quarry on the outskirts of town, and within days he had established a series of transport carts to take him to and from this new acquisition. Before the first snow fell that year, he had moved all the mayonnaise machines to this quarry and arranged them in production lines that are now very familiar to our employees. You might assume that winter would be a solemn and slower time on finger licking farms, but the Colonel's plans couldn't wait for the frost to thaw. And with the addition of a silo earlier that year, the chickens could continue to produce throughout the season. Some farms choose to employ unnatural sources of heat for their animals. But as we successfully defended in Ferngill Republic vs. Finger Lickin' Farms, the coops on our farms are so well insulated that even leaving a door open for the entire winter season won't harm our fowl. The animal's movement itself is enough to keep our chickens happy and healthy, without the additional overhead required to keep heaters running all winter. Not to mention the possibility that a heater might short in the night and start a fire. No, the Colonel knew exactly what he was doing by avoiding those heaters. While developing the farm that winter, the Colonel didn't forget to deepen his relationship with his dear friend Shane. In fact, in an attempt to impress the man, the Colonel picked up a fishing rod for the very first time in his life and won a local ice fishing competition that winter. Truly, our founder was a renaissance man. Now, some of our more superstitious competitors might say that the Colonel's experiments with so-called void eggs are dangerous, profane, or even blasphemous to Yoba. But we at Finger Lickin' Farms can assure you that, through a partnership with a local entrepreneur, Finger Lickin' Farms is able to bring a whole new variety of products to grocery stores around the world. And can you really look at this little chick and see anything evil? Anything at all? Besides, no one complained when the Colonel and Shane began their work with our patented blue chickens after all. Just because one egg glows red and black and is warm to the touch doesn't mean that there's anything nefarious going on, as we'll prove in Ferngill Republic vs. Finger Lickin' Farms 2 later this year. And speaking of blue chickens, it was at the end of this very first year when Shane and the Colonel had a breakthrough, after a short breakdown on Shane's part, and began to market their new breed. They were so proud that they provided two dozen eggs to a local saloon and the entire place shut down for the day to create the valley's largest omelet served in years. Unfortunately, as we all know, a strain of avian flu broke out at the end of the year, and while he desperately wished for any other option, the colonel was forced to cull his flock. The meat was thoroughly tested and treated for any potential remaining impurities before being released into the market, and it was with this seed money that Finger Lickin' Farms was able to expand into the nearby communities, purchasing other failed properties that were affected by the strain. Only one small chick remained by the end of the culling, one called Scout Sarah, named after another of the many believers in the Colonel's vision. And that's where you come in. We are currently accepting applications for new franchise owners in the Finger Lickin' family. If what you've seen today has convinced you that the finger licking life is the way for you, then make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below indicating your interest in our enterprise. For those of you hoping to fast track your way to franchise ownership, you can also find a link below or on screen now to support the Colonel's vision via Patreon or a YouTube channel membership. Regardless, we hope you enjoyed your tour today, and please remember that this video is private property and distribution without permission will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Bye bye now!